We have another question back there. Um, my niece is uh, turning three this year. Um, at what age should we teach them evolution? <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and, and, no, that, that's a great question. And, and, the issue of what do you teach when. Um, there are three, ba three big ideas in evolution. Okay. One is heredity. That stuff gets passed down every generation. You look more like your parents than you look like anybody else. Cats have kittens, dogs have puppies. Dogs don't have kittens. You know, and there's sort of a basic heredity thing. You can, you can start dealing with that five, six, you know, early elementary. Um, the idea of, of you know, reproduction. Uh, you don't have to go into all the details of the plumbing and the you know, how parts get from A to B and all that, but you know, the big ideas, the big ideas of, of similarity across generations. A second big idea of evolution is time. And that is one of the hardest things, especially for little kids to grasp. Um, and teachers in elementary school will often um, have different exercises to try to get across the idea of time by converting time to distance, for example. You know, we did this in Girl Scouts, as a matter of fact. You know, take, take a long rope and mark off when, when did the first beard, birds appear and when did the first uh, lions appear, or whatever. And sort of try to get an idea that there's been a lot of time. The earth is very old, the universe is very old. Um, your own personal history, you know, when, wh when were you born, when was your brother born, et cetera, you know, whatever. Uh, try to get across the idea of time. Uh, it, but keep your expectations low because it's tough for grown-ups to really grasp deep time. The third big principle of evolution is adaptation. That groups of organisms will adjust to environmental circumstances over a period of time. And in elementary school, there are a lot of uh, activities that teachers do to try to help students understand that idea. Um, there's exercises that you do. You put different kinds of um, uh, shaped objects. <laughs> Jelly beans are a big hit. And you give some kids tweezers, some kids spoons, and the bird beaks exercise. You know, what can you pick? You can't pick up toothpicks with a spoon. You know, there, there's various um, things that um, students learn about the shape of bird beaks and the kind of food they eat. You know, there, there's various things. Um, protective coloration exercises. Um, uh, you can cut out. Uh, colored moths and newsprint moths and sprinkle them on newsprint and the kids have only a couple seconds to walk by the tables and pick up as many moths as they can. You know, a simulation of um, uh, bird predation on um, uh, wild populations. And you'll find that uh, whatever the background color is, the kids will pick up fewer of those. Okay. So, you know, there, there's very basic kinds of adaptation exercises that are done in, in elementary school. I think getting those three ideas across in the early grades is very important. Uh, and you as parents or uncles and aunts and grandparents can start to um, uh, help students develop those ideas gradually. I mean, because it takes a while for these ideas to sink in. Then in junior high and high school, you put those ideas together. What happens when stuff is passed on every generation? heredity, reproduction. What happens when groups of organisms can change over time because of adjusting to environmental circumstances, predation or changes in weather or whatever? And what happens if you do this for a really, really, really long period of time? Well, it's evolution. That's, that's really the core of understanding evolution. So if you understand those three ideas, then when the kids in junior high or high school, it's not such a shock to learn about evolution. Oh yeah, populations change through time. Living things have common ancestors. If they understand the basics, they, it's not such a, a, a radical idea that living things share common ancestry. And if you can only deal with one of those three ideas, deal with heredity. Because if you accept genetics, you're pretty much stuck with accepting evolution if you really understand genetics.